Yeah? yeah? Right? Yes. Deal? Doing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. There's a module for that? There, of course there is. This is the second session in Jam's Drupal Camp. So I'm really lucky to be able to go to a lot of technology events in the year. And I started thinking to myself, some of these great sessions that, that our colleagues do get done once or twice, and there's a video recording of them online, maybe or maybe not, and they might be hard to find. And so I thought, when I saw something cool, I'd like to get it out on YouTube. I'd like to write something about it. I'd like to give that information more of a chance to be free or to be found, I think. Today, I am talking with Amitai Burstein from a Drupal shop in Israel, good friend of mine, shop is called Gizra. Good morning, Amitai. How are you doing? Good morning, Jam. How are you? I'm, I'm excellent, actually. You know, we just celebrated Bar Mitzvah for uh, Drupal, right? Right, yeah. exactly. 13 <laughs> years old yesterday. Mazel tov. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so what are you going to be talking about today? Today I'm going to talk about a uh, new development we've been, uh, something new that we've developed here in, uh, in uh, Gizra, it's called Zariz, which is the Hebrew word uh, which means quick or agile. I want you to introduce what you're going to be talking about today. It's um, when you came to me and you wanted to talk about this uh, here, I got really excited because I had read about what you were doing with Jekyll plus Drupal in Drekel, and yeah. then when you told me actually that had turned into kind of a dead end and you'd come up with something much better, uh, I wanted to know all about that. So let me turn this over to you. You start right. your screen sharing when you've got your slides ready. And um, so everyone, welcome to Jam's Drupal Camp, uh, today's session with Amitai Borstein from Gizra about Zariz. That's right. Tell me when you see a big Gizra in front of you. I see a big Gizra in front of me. All right, cool. So you heard about who I am and you heard about uh, Gizra. And let's, let's, start, uh, let's start the session about Zariz. And I'll start it with saying something pretty dramatic that very, very few people know. It's a big secret in the world, and that is Drupal is slow. But it's not really fair. I mean, we can say that not just Drupal is slow, every CMS Every CMS out there are slow, and certainly every CMS, every CMS are slow when they are compared to static sites. And the reason that I say slow is that every time you go into your site and you hit F5 to refresh the site, then it goes to the server, which calculates the entire world, and it counts into eternity twice, and then it returns some HTML and CSS and JavaScript. And then you hit the F5 10 seconds later, and it does the same calculation over and over again. So we have static sites, static sites such as Jekyll, for example. This is something that uh, the guys from GitHub have developed. And a static site means that no calculation are done on the server. You are writing some, uh, you are writing your site using like a templating system, and then it's being generated. It's being generated one time. And then it's being served by the server, which is serving only HTML and CSS and JavaScript. Nothing, nothing is being calculated. And obviously, that's much, much faster than any CMS or PHP or .NET or Java, whatever, out there. And I don't know if you had the uh, opportunity of working with Jekyll, but it's a lot of fun. Certainly, if you've been working for years uh, with Drupal when you need to do theme overrides and stuff like that, if you look at the screen, you'll see on the left, this is the gizra.com site, which is, was on Jekyll. And on the right, you can see the, the, the raw, uh, uh, the raw um, uh, input, the, the way it was written. You can see there is some YML on top. And then on the bottom, you can see there is some templating system that allows you to do some ifs and for each and, and so on. And it, it, it's just a great pleasure writing uh, sites with Jekyll, because you just write your own HTML 
no calculation, no views, no form API, no field API, no theme overrides, no nothing. It's, it's just beautiful. And even if you want to have some like a tool to write online, you want to write uh, some blog post, you have the prose IO, uh, a great tool that was developed that, that was developed by uh, the guys from Development Seeds, which allows you to, to write those posts. However, Jekyll or static sites, they have, they have their own problems. I mean, you cannot compare it into Drupal for, for two main reasons, I would say. First of all, uh, you know, it cannot do all the calculations that Drupal can do. I mean, Drupal's come, comes with all the access and roles and permission and form alters and, and all, all the things that give it all, all its power that Jack, Jekyll or different static site generations, set, static site generation, generators, sorry, just don't have. So that's one thing. And it doesn't have any workflow built into it. So for example, for gizrad.com, when I'm writing a blog post, the workflow is pretty simple. I write a blog post near uh, our project manager does some editing, Bree signs it off, signs it off, and that's it. We just merge it in, right? It's, it, we're using Git for that. And it's awesome and it's super. But if you're thinking about a big online publishing site, it just, it just won't work. So that's one thing, like there's no workflow. And the second thing, uh, specifically for Jekyll, but other stuff as well, it doesn't, it doesn't scale. Meaning if I have like uh, hundreds or thousands of different pages, then Jekyll takes a long time to generate them. Every time you change even one line, one character in one page, it regenerates the entire site. And when I say takes a long time, if I, we're talking about 10K uh, pages or uh, a bit more, it can take uh, 20 minutes, it can take even hours to generate, to generate the site. So obviously if you're a content editor and you have to wait like five hours for your site to be regenerated and to preview it, obviously it won't work. Another thing about static sites is when you think about them, you oftentimes think about it can be used only for anonymous users. Uh, however, I would like to say that I don't think so. Um, using JavaScript, you can fill uh, a, a pretty serious gap over here because there are so many sites that when you log in, it almost doesn't change anything. You, oh, you get the same page as anonymous user, maybe just on the, on the top menu it says, hello Amitai or hello Jam, and maybe there is one article that is gonna fetch like specifically for you. Still, this thing you can do it with JavaScript and enjoy the power of, you know, uh, uh, enjoy the speed of static sites. So indeed, uh, since Drupal con Portland a bit before that, I was trying, uh, I was working on a project called Decal, which was trying to, um, to combine Drupal and Jekyll, and we just hit too many barriers, and we're realizing that what we're trying to do, like the goal that, that we wanted is using Drupal as a backend, but serve it really fast. The goal is still valid, but the approach that we took uh, wasn't, wasn't right. And people were also asking all the time, why can't you use, uh, why can't you use uh, Boost? Boost model, in case you don't know it, you can put it on any Drupal site, and it like uh, pre-caches all, all the different pages and serves them. But there's two things about uh, Boost that I didn't like for, uh, for my needs. The first one is that Boost is still uh, tightly coupled into your Drupal site, into your Drupal server. I want, I want to have something like Jekyll gave me, the fact that I'm able to take the site, right? I have the HTML and use Git in order, in order, uh, in order to push it. So that, that was, that's actually the main, the main reason that, uh, that Boost won't fly. I want to do a complete separation between uh, the back end and the front end. And this leads me to the second thing that, that we realized. I mean, as developers, right, we're fanatic with best practices, right? I mean, if somebody would tell you that they are, uh, you know, uh, working directly on the production, you would like, you, you'll kill them, right? You'll tell them you have to work on dev using Git and then from there push it into stage and from there to live and all the best practices using the, the right tools and, and branching and stuff like that. And we love it and it, and it, works, and it works for us. 
but the problem is that you know a client come a big online publishing uh, site or an e-commerce site and they tell us okay Gizra guys we want you to, to, to do our site and we like charge tons of money and we put the best developers on it and we do we do a really shiny site and then we give it to the client and then we'll tell the client listen when you're gonna write the article just make sure because that's the live site you're gonna you're gonna change so when you click save just know that immediately that that new page that new article is gonna be uh, you know it will be appear on the online site and if you don't want it to appear immediately you need to change it from published to unpublished but that means that only you or a certain amount of people will be able will be able to see it so um, what we've realized is we need to solve also the problem of content staging and content staging is a problem and content staging is a problem that uh, many have tried to solve. That's why I said that we, get, we brought a new solution to an old problem. I've read so many different articles about people trying to push content from their stage server to the live server and like unholy, really unholy solutions using Jenkins and, and, and stuff like that. And always, you know, there's so many culprits uh, on the way so many places where this might not work uh, properly. So we, we realize that we wanna apply those best practices that we've learned, like using Git or the concept of Git branches. And we try to model that idea and bring it from the developer's world into the content world. So what you are seeing right now, and we're jumping right into seeing Zariz in action, that's a, a clean Drupal, a clean Drupal seven with the Riz module installed uh, and all the dependency. And there's not much dependency. Basically, it's being built on top of organic groups. I'll I'll, I'll do a quick overview later on about about the architecture. But what you see over here is a clean site, and you are looking right now at the live branch. That's like the master branch in Git. You can see the arrow is marking on like a special Zariz toolbar, which is saying the live. And also in the URL, you can see local d 7 dev slash live. That like in the URL, we're having like a persistent URL, the PURL model, that I'm always in the right context. So I'm able to create a new branch. And again, look at the URL, I'm in live slash node add. So all the time I know under which context I am. And I create a new branch called new Robin, and in, in that new branch, again, the URL has changed. In that new branch, uh, the toolbar is smart enough to show me that there is currently no content over there. So I'm able to click on the add article. And then I'll add a new article. And that article is only on the new Robin branch. It is not on the live branch. All right. You can also look at the bottom left. There you can see that there is a special debug block that shows you that the nodes, next to each node, it tells you what is the origin of that branch, what is, uh, what is the origin uh, of that node. So you know exactly why you are seeing a certain node. And Zariz is, is, uh, is made um, uh, very flexible, so you can have like multi-branching. So you can create even a new branch from that new Robin branch, you can create an even newer branch, and again, it tells me there's no content. I can add a new article. Again, in the URL, I can see exactly under which branch I am. And now I can see that I'm able to see the different nodes on that specific, on that specific branch. If I, will, if I will merge those branches all the way into the live site, then now you can see that I'm, again, in the URL, you can see that I'm viewing the live branch, but now I see all the different content. And the advantage of what we saw right now is that I was able, as a, as a content editor, I was able to see exactly how my article would look, would look without setting it to publish or without setting it to unpublish or doing some weird tricks. Zariz made sure using like different uh, query alters to show you only the correct nodes to, that belong into that context. And if we'll have a quick look about, uh, if we'll have a quick look at 
Zariz itself, that's from the GitHub, you can see that Zariz was, creating, was created from the API upwards into the UI, right? So you have a function, there is create branch, and there is get merge conflict, and there is merge branch. And one of the signs for me as a, as a developer that, that there is the approach that there is, is taking is the right one is two things. First, it's pretty easy for me to, to, to explain the concept. Uh, I think and hope that you guys understand what, what, what I've showed. But that's on like on the concept level. But the second thing is taking that concept and translating it into code was pretty easy. And it was also really easy to, to follow TDD, test-driven development. And those little signs that show me that it's easy to write the code and it's easy to write a solid API is a really strong sign, at least for me, I hope for others as well, that there is a, uh, has a really um, strong uh, and, 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 and valid approach over here. And now after I show that, I want to talk about two use cases that I have in mind of how we can use Ariz. So first of all, that like I've um, mentioned earlier, we have the online, uh, the online publishing uh, site. For example, a newspaper site. Imagine that a newspaper when they're preparing for the weekend, so they prepare the articles all week long. Right now, I don't know exactly how are, they're doing it. I can, I can assume that they are just unpublishing all the articles and they're going to need to publish it later on. But with Zariz, you will have a branch called weekend whatever, January weekend. So everybody who is permitted to go into that branch, right, whoever has access into that branch, we're able to see the site exactly how it's going to look whenever it's going to be merged. Just like as developers, when we, you know, we switch from one branch to another, we see a snapshot of exactly how the site will look. A second use case, and when I demoed this uh, use case to Boyan Zivanovich from Commerce Guys, he, he was pretty excited about it, is e-commerce sites. And this is, again, one of the unspoken uh, secrets of the trade and, or problems is you have a huge e-commerce site, let's say a fashion site, and every season you want to change completely all the products that you show on the site. So let's say you have like 200 different products. How are you going to do it like in one second? How are you going to switch? So, you know, I'm, I know, I know commerce, uh, Drupal Commerce really, really well. And even for me, it's going to be hard to do it without mistakes. You have to create the products first, and then you'll have to create the nodes, and everything should be unpublished, and then you'll have to use views bulk operation to publish them, you know, and you have to do it without any failure, and you have absolutely no way of seeing how it's going to look on the site. And with Zariz, you are able to do it because uh, Zariz is, be is being built uh, not to be node-centric. It doesn't care if it's a node, if it's a taxonot taxonomy term or a commerce product. It just remembers which was the last entity ID, okay, different entity, uh, entity IDs. And the good thing about Zariz is when you're building wh whatever I, I showed you, all the different pages that you saw, it was normal view, just a normal view. It doesn't have to know about anything, doesn't know, have to know about OG or organic groups or nothing. The only thing you have to do is when you're building your view, is in the query settings, as you see in the mark when I click it, just add the Zariz query tag, and that's it. Zariz will take it from here and do all the right calculation of showing you the correct nodes. So that was the content staging part. And just a little question before, uh, Jem. Are you totally amazed with what I just showed you? <laughs> uh, yeah, I was, um, mm -hmm. yes, I am. Yes, <laughs> I really am. All right, cool. I can't see your face, so I, I don't know if oh, you're wait. lying or not. But <laughs> wait, wait, I'll do that. Ask me the question again. Ask me the question again. Okay, let me. I, I want to see you. Yeah, I don't, I don't see. You. Where are you? Okay, here. I, I mean, you got ask, you asked me the question. Are you totally amazed? Oh my! Oh, <laughs> I am totally amazed. But. Okay. But seriously, I am actually, honestly, totally amazed. So all right, cool. So let me bring you to the next thing that will uh, that is pretty exciting, and that's 
because I was talking, you know, babbling a lot about static sites, but up until now, you didn't see any static sites. So the next step is taking that content staging and saying, okay, I don't only care really about just the live branch, but I care one more thing. I want that branch to appear super fast, like the fastest that it can. And I want another thing, you know, remember the best practices. I want to do, and that's the, probably the, the amazing thing we learned from Jekyll. I want to do the deployment with GitHub, uh, with Git, you know, Git push, Git revert. I mean, I love Pantheon, I love Aquaya Cloud and stuff like that, but shit, I mean, you know, doing deployment with Git, it, it, it's amazing. And that part, again, using the right tool for the right problem, we're using Grunt. If, if, if whoever has been working with Angular or Node.js is probably familiar with Grunt. Grunt is a task manager tool uh, with, uh, written in, in, in JavaScript. And the idea of Grunt is what I've shown right now, that the Zariz part in Drupal is dealing with the content staging. But there is another part, and that's like written in, uh, it's written like in uh, Node.js, which allows you to write Grunt stage and there is a special task called stage that knows how to, uh, to connect with your Drupal site and tell the Drupal site, okay, I know there were new content that was merged into the live site. Bring me just that new content, the node number one, node number five, and another, I don't know, index PHP, the front page. And Drupal answers with those pages, and Grant knows how to take those pages. It extracts all the CSS, all the JavaScript and everything, and just create a complete copy of that, of that file. And I'm saying it, it brings, it asks only for the change file so we can do it in a scalable manner. So even if I have 100K different pages, I don't need to regenerate all of them. I just need to regenerate the new nodes or the new entities that were created on the live branch. And if I will look at, at the page right now, this is like an anonymous user looking at the Drupal site, then you can see that it took about 600 milliseconds just to see it. Again, that's on my computer without caching, without anything. And it's not really important what are exactly the milliseconds. What's important is to look at the next slide and to see that it's a, it looks like the same screenshot, but it's another, I swear to you, it's another screenshot that I took. But that's the static site. And if you look, you'll see that it took only about 100 milliseconds to do it. So it's completely disconnected from the server side. And so if we'll start talking about uh, static sites in terms of security, the fact that the backend can be, you know, behind all the firewalls and all, you know, everything that you want to have, and you're just serving static sites. So that's the is, guys. And back to you. <laughs> I was... Um... I was going to say at some point along the, I was going to make the joke about static sign, uh, sites being the hipster fixie bicycle of the internet. This solves all kinds of problems on both sides. It's, I'm really glad that you took the time to, uh, to share that with us. I, I've, I've, I've actually demonstrated, like I said, to Boyan from Comes guys and to some like um, known developers from, from Aquaya. Mm. And everybody that I've showed it to them, what I'm happy is that the concept was really clear about what I'm talking about. And that's not trivial. I mean, uh, the fact that I'm able to show it even to non-techy guys and start talking about nodes and Git and stuff like that. I, I explained Git just because I know the audience is probably knows what Git is. But when I showed it you know, to, to, to non-techy guys who have no clue what Git is and they hardly understand what branch is, but thanks to like, the, 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 the Zariz toolbar, they were able to understand, oh, I get a snapshot of exactly the content that I want. I think that's the true, that's the true value. The concept over here, the, 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 the mind shift, for me, that was the biggest thing. Coding it, just uh, uh, reassured, that, uh, uh, reassured that the concept uh, was right. Sure, but there's a, you've, 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 you've pulled in a, a whole set of really interesting and really, really important little tricks along the way. I think the fact that you're only um, calling the diff from the um, new master branch in each case to generate the static site, right? That's, yeah. a huge, that's a huge time and processor load saving. And then yeah. the fact that actually I'm just working in Drupal, okay, yeah. so that I can give my completely non-technical staff 
uh, a good authoring experience and use Drupal workflows and um, all of that is, is incredibly valuable because um, personally, I write my posts in straight up HTML and I know people who are comfortable with Markdown and um, I know people you know who run their own websites using Git and whatever, but that's for um, the geeks. That's for people with a yeah. heavy technical background and, and you can take all of the advantages that we have now with Spark and with everything else and basically Absolutely. it's this trick where you have a, a, a complete, full, real Drupal site, right? Um, that then gets abstracted out to something much faster uh, where it's um, uh, um, where you can. Now, the one question I have, but you don't have to, by the way. You can see it's like it's connected in the concept is connected, but it's not tightly coupled. So you could actually serve your Drupal live site as is. You don't have to have a static site. Like the static site is the 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 jewel on the crown, right? Okay. You, so, but what you can you, do. So, can you use that as a sort of a of a caching system? So, because my next question was basically, um, what about parts of your site that need uh, user interaction? What about parts where um, you know I've got authenticated users doing stuff on my site? Okay, can so I if, can I combine this? It would probably be a little hard to combine. So I think it's like something you need to decide early on. Do I want to go full static and fill the gap of the authenticated users using JavaScript with all the benefits and the, with all the advantages or disadvantages? Or since, like you said, the beauty of Zariz that I can see it is, basically Zariz is leveraging OG, a branch equals a group. And that's the, the Drupal that you saw. It's the Drupal that you know and love. Zariz is a really thin layer. If you're a developer, I really encourage you to go and dive into the code, into the Zariz model, the API model. You see, it's mostly hook implementation. It's not doing anything too fancy. So all the workflows, all the things that you want to put in, you could put in. So either you're going to go static or either you're going to stay with, a, with the Drupal site that has there is, and you will serve your clients, you will serve your users only the live branch. Part of there is, this is a pull request I'm working on, that you'll have an option saying, if you are not a special user with a special, special permission, you'll be able to see only the live branch. Otherwise, give me a permission to see all the other branches. And you know, who can merge, who can merge a branch, who can create a new branch? This is everything, it's just leveraging OG. So if you know OG, or if you know even Drupal, all the permission and roles and stuff like that, you can start working. And that's what's so exciting about Zariz. I mean, I wouldn't say Zariz is done yet, right? It needs some more work. But what you saw, well, I showed it on slides, but you know, Download Zariz. There is a Zariz example model over there. Just enable it, follow the readme, and see it for yourself. No magic involved. OK, so the loosely coupled part is, is great to underscore because I, I, um, it took me a second to pull that into my understanding. So I can use Zariz on my regular Drupal 7 site and just use it as a workflow content staging solution Absolutely. and have everything else in Drupal that I want. Absolutely. Um, or I ca could take it to the next step and generate a static site if that's an appropriate use case for what I'm doing. Like you said, that's the, uh, the, the, the cherry on top. And now I'll re-ask you, are you amazed? <laughs> I'm really amazed. I'm really stunned. Where does this go in Drupal 8 land, where Drupal 8's own architecture is loosely coupled and where we have content staging, where we have exportable, importable configuration and so on. How does this fit in there? Okay, so what I like there is, and you know, it, people might like it and there are others who won't like it, but the great advantage of when we say content staging, up until now, I believe that the audience that were hearing content staging, they were thinking, okay, how am I gonna push content? How am I gonna push content just like I push configuration from my stage server into my live server. But Zariz comes with a new concept and says, no stage server, man. It's the live server. Your content is being all done on the live side. So if you created a new view, boom, it applies to all the new branches. If you want to have like different configuration for each branch, you'll need to do some more work. But, but if it's an entity 
then Zariz will remember the, the entity for you and know how to show you stuff. So if you think even further about using panels and configure and uh, you know there is the, uh, I forgot the name right now, the panels, uh, which is an entity, uh, fieldable panes, right? Panels, fieldable panes, or panelizer. All that are entities. So you could potentially like have a certain homepage on the live branch and work on a completely new layout for the homepage on another branch and see how it looks exactly and then merge it. I mean, the advantage of Zariz is when I create like from an online publishing site, when I create an article, it's not important for me just to see how the article will look. It's really important for me to see how it's going to look on the homepage, how it's going to look on the category page, how it's going to look on different teasers. And that Zariz gives me really easily because everything is being done on the live site itself. And I can, um, I can roll back if, if I have a problem, right? It's all in Git. Yeah. Oh, I mean, why, uh, uh, wait. If it's on wait, a static whoa, site, whoa. if it's on a static site, then it's on Git. Otherwise, there's a risk. What you saw, that's nodes. Everything you see is nodes. I didn't change the way Drupal is working. You know nodes, and you know views, okay. and you know fields, right? So basically, Zariz holds all the information of the different versioning. So yeah, like you're saying, if I wanted to roll back, all the information is there. Right now, it's like not yet implemented, but the information is there. I'm, I'm able to say, OK, those three nodes, uh, they, they are from the latest re revision. I want to kick them off, and it's, and it's possible. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and that's why I'm so excited about it, and that's why I want to do the podcast. Let me tell you like my little agenda about why we're, why I approach you and I'm uh, with wanting to show about Zariz. So first of all, on the, you know, on the personal level, I'm really excited about the work over here, and I really think I I hit something uh, interesting. And the second thing, from my experience, like when I introduced the message stack into the Drupal world, which is the message stack is basically activity stream and notification. It took some time for the community to pick it up. And the day they picked it, picked it up is actually whenever uh, you know, we've been working with Aqua on Drupal Commons and with Commerce guys on Commerce Kickstart with, and with Open, Scholar, with Open Scholar, and we talked uh, with Open and Atrium as well. And then I explained to the right people the advantage of using the message stack. And whenever they uh, incorporated the message stack into the distribution, then now you, we have like 12, 12K people using the message stack. And that's why I wanted to do the podcast because, again, either you will agree or disagree, but I think we are on to something pretty big over here. I don't know about other CMSs doing content staging uh, like that in, in, in an elegant way. So I want to get the community excited about it. So people will come and start doing the contribution. Again, like what we started talking about in the beginning. Contribute as much as you can. Uh, later on, you'll get clients for that. <laughs> but <laughs> in the beginning, just contribute. So we'll do the best. So Drupal, when people are saying, you know, all the decision makers who are not technical, and they will look for best online publishing uh, CMS or best e-commerce uh, solution, they will see Drupal. And Zariz will power it. So that's my agenda. <laughs> all right. Think, you know, think big. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right, so I am excited, and um, I, will, I, will, I will tell other people. So, you know, if that helps, I'm happy to do it. Thank you yeah. so much for yeah, coming on you. today. It's thank really, really exciting. Me. Jen, thank you so much for having me and for, for doing uh, Jen's Drupal Camps. <laughs> uh -huh. It's my High pleasure, five. Amitai. Uh, High, high five, five, man. Boof. Okay, so Amitai, uh, have a good one. Thank you so much, and I uh, hope to talk to you soon. Cheers. Bye. Thank you. Take bye care. Bye.